Good evening. I'm Liz Jolly, Chief Librarian at the British Library. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the virtual private view opening of our new exhibition, Khadija Say, In This Space We Breathe, here at the British Library this evening. This exhibition showcases the final series of artworks produced by this hugely talented young British Gambian artist, Khadija Say. The British Library is delighted to be hosting this exhibition alongside our major exhibition, Unfinished Business, The Fight for Women's Rights, where Say's work, Petor, is the first item on display. This exhibition is a great team effort created by various British Library departments and colleagues, together with our exhibitions team. But I'd particularly like to congratulate its curators, Marion Wallace and Khadija George Sasse, for their exceptional work and research. The British Library would especially like to thank the family and estate of Khadija Say, not only for collaborating over the displays of Say's work, but for their wholehearted engagement with the project, including the research process. We are particularly grateful to Nicola Green, David Lammy, Lucy Cartledge and Anna Freitas. In a moment, our curators will talk about the nine works on display in much more detail in a short documentary film. They'll then take your questions in a live Q&A session from the library. You can submit your questions by using the dialogue boxes on your screen. I hope you enjoy the virtual private view and wish you all an excellent evening from the British Library. Welcome to the British Library. I'm Marianne Wallace, lead curator for Africa. Khadija Saye was a photographer, an artist of extraordinary promise. Saye, who was British born and of Gambian parentage, was tragically killed in the Grenfell Tower fire in 2017 at the age of just 24. At the time, she was exhibiting works in the Diaspora Pavilion at the Venice Biennale and on the cusp of major success. This series, In This Space We Breathe, is composed of nine powerfully evocative self-portraits. Into these eloquent and multi-layered photographs, the artist weaves symbols of her Gambian heritage. In so doing, she expresses, it seems to me, the importance of this heritage and of religious faith for strength in the face of trauma. For Khadija Say, this trauma included the experience of racism in Britain. So the work suggests a great deal about the struggles she faced as a black woman but they also express hope and offer her African cultural background as a way of understanding and navigating the present. The British Library exhibition shows nine works which we'll explore in this film. I'm now joined by the external curator, Khadija George Sesse. Together, and with the help of those who knew Khadija Saye and her artwork well, we researched the nine images and the items displayed in them. I got to know Khadija because, of course, my wife mentored her and she worked in her studio. And there were a few things that we had in common. One was that Khadija was growing up in Grenfell Tower. And that reminded me of the time I spent in my childhood in the Broadwater Farm estate in Tottenham. In so many ways, in black and ethnic minority communities here in London, many of us have spent time in our big estates. The second was her ambition, a desire and a passion to succeed amidst a slightly fragile or delicate personality, and that reminded me of myself. She had come of age at inter-university, getting access to mentoring and support to achieve her dreams in the art world and to go to art school and university, and again, uh, I got that sort of support. 
I met Khadija in 2014. Uh, she was 21 and had just uh, graduated from Farnham College, having done a BA in photography. And she submitted her work to an exhibition for young emerging artists called the Discerning Eye Exhibition at the Mal Galleries. And I was a judge and curator of, uh, at that exhibition. And I uh, selected her work, having never met her, um, and put it in the sort of center of the wall that I curated. And I met her and her mother, Mary, at the opening night of that exhibition. Um, the work that she had submitted uh, was a series called Crowned that she was incredibly proud of and um, talked really passionately about that evening to me. It was a series of work um, of photographs of the back of the heads of her closest female friends and family. And really it was a celebration and a kind of exploration of black women's hair and what it means to them, what it means to, to um, their community as well as them as individuals. She called it crowned because she felt that all of these women were queens. She then came and um, worked for me in my studio and I um, saw her very often, uh, you know, most weeks in fact, for the following three years before she tragically passed away. But what was so exciting was that she was on the cusp. I'm not sure she fully understood how on the cusp of greatness she was, but her exhibition at the Venice Biennale was exemplary. It was exhilarating, the launch of that work, and to see her blossom, but to see the public reaction to the joy, wonder, and awe of her artistry. The first work in the series is called Sotiu, and it's an image of Khadija, a self-portrait, as, as all nine works are, uh, an image of the artist actually with her back to the camera in this instance. And in her hand, she's holding uh, what looks like a bunch of sticks, and these are sticks with a, a great significance, in fact, a double significance. So these are the chewing sticks from the Salvadora persica tree that specifically are used for, um, for the toothbrush because of their healing properties and it helps with oral hygiene and they've been proven for that for many, many years. So they're used as toothbrushes but they're also used to invoke spiritualism and, and, and spirits as well. Now that they are imported into the different diasporas that use them. They do come in packets, um, but this is the natural, this is the natural stick. So it, it, it's quite important almost as a, as a first image because this is just an everyday, this is an everyday object. This is an everyday object yes. that everybody uses, whether you're going to use a natural toothbrush or a regular toothbrush, everybody uses it. And you can buy it in the, in the market in North London. You can buy it in the market in North London, exactly. <laughs> um, and they're of different sizes in the same way that Khadija does have them in, in the image as well. So you can, you know, have your choice. And some of them are actually formed like a brush um, at the end as well. There's a whole aspect of cleanliness as we will kind of see in other objects in, um, in Khadija's work, this whole thing of femininity and cleanliness as well, and that, and that is part of it. So this second artwork that we're going to look at here is called Terre, and uh, in it, 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 it's in some ways a very striking and unusual image. Khadija Sayy appears with a string of amulets on her face. So these are small pieces of paper with Quranic writings on them, sewn into leather pouches, small leather pouches, and held together with a string. And this is actually uh, a string of amulets that was kept in a suitcase in 
her and her mother's flat in Grenfell Tower and the suitcase was lost in the fire as was as were many of Khadija's artworks. Oh, that's a sad part of the legacy mm. of, of what we've lost of yeah. Khadija Say's work and I, I find this image particularly striking because the amulets that she has covering her eyes they're usually, when somebody has usually gone to visit a, Marab visit a marabou, they're often given these for protection. So they're not actually, since they're given for protection, they're not something that's shown publicly. They're usually something that's worn underneath clothing, maybe around the neck or around the waist. So for Khadija to have them on site publicly is very, very striking, and even more so to have them covering her eyes. Mm. You know, she obviously was saying something very specific about that. We can't really make an interpretation of what that, uh, that is, but just the very fact that she has them publicly and on her face shows really in terms of how she was even developing as an artist to take that brave step of coming out of herself to say something about her heritage. When she talks about the black body, and how she uses that in her art, that's, that's very obvious yeah. in this image. What we discovered more and more as we looked at these images was that very often Khadija does something unexpected. Absolutely. Uh, striking, original, perhaps even subversive in the way she uses the yes. objects in the photographs. Yes. Yeah. The process Khadija used for these images is called the wet collodion mm. process, photographic process, and it was invented in 1851. So in the wet collodion process, um, the, it's not a photograph in the way that we understand it. It can't be reproduced. Uh, you have a, a sort of metal plate with silver nitrate and other chemicals on it, and the photograph is almost taken onto that plate, and you develop it within sort of 10 or 15 minutes. And so, in a way, the image kind of emerges out of the plate. And so some of the, um, uh, some of the sort of hazy and kind of dreamlike qualities that you see on these images kind of come out of that process and are why it doesn't look like a kind of contemporary modern perfect um, it's almost the opposite of the perfect photoshop instagram photograph it's 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 much more mystical because the chemicals on the plate and in that process have this kind of um uh, have an energy and, and and a life of their own as it were Nakbejan is an image of Khadija Sayé uh, side on to the camera with somebody we can't identify holding a cow horn to her neck. And this strongly suggests uh, a healing ceremony in which um, impurities are um, extracted from the patient's body. Um, and you can see also that the healer in, in the image uh, seems to have um, a small bag hanging from their side and this is probably a bag uh, containing um, medicines and other things important for healing. In her work she explores her black African identity and I think who she is as a woman, really. Um, and you can see it crystal clear. Um, her playing with her mother's Christian Gambian heritage and her father's Muslim Gambian heritage and playing with that sense of age and time and spirituality to get this sort of huge depth and I have to say, the Khadija I knew, um, this bouncy but tender soul, is transformed as a sort of spiritual woman that takes us back in time and evokes powerfully 
the image of the black woman in a traditional black setting. The second image, Ragal, is a really striking one of Khadija Sayer holding her hand in front of her face. It's one of the images where we can't see her face. And on each of her fingers, there is a, a goat's horn. Goat's horns are used in the Gambia in divination. So um, the practice of discovering the roots of life's problems and then what can be done to deal with them in future. And to us, as we looked through and talked about these images, these, these two very striking and, and really quite deep images seem to have quite a lot in common. It's kind of got a heavy kind of feel to them. Every single pose that she has is very striking. And you can tell it's, it's not, um, it's one that she has, she's thought about quite carefully mm. so that she's representing the object very well, but also what, she, what she's feeling in her, in her body language as well. Yeah. Absolutely, there's, there's a really strong element of performance mm -hmm. in these images uh, that comes through, even though they're, they're still images, they're not necessarily what we think of as performance art, yeah. but, but, but it, it, it's so strikingly there. Yeah. And, and going back to the sort of one of the overarching themes of this series, it is so much about Gambian culture providing a Absolutely. way through difficulties, yes. a way of survival, a constant reference point. Yes, yes, very true. In the nine months that she had to make this work for the Venice Biennale, she was nearly thwarted multiple times, really due to external events in her life, financial pressures, work pressures, and, and, and other traumas and hardships that really would have um, thwarted most people. And she really kind of doubled down on making this work, which became for her, as every week went by, almost a physical way of um, enacting her own faith uh, in order not just to make this work, but to su actually survive herself. And so the uh, wet collodion process became incredibly important for her, as well as the kind of themes and subject matter in this work. This next image is called Andy Churai, and in it, Khadija Sayo holds uh, a clay pot to her ear. It's a traditional piece of Gambian pottery traditionally red with white trim. These pots are universal in Gambian homes and they're used to burn incense. Khadija, do you want to tell us a bit more about them? And, and also these pots which were bought in East London very yes. recently. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean it's, it's great that we can actually find these in East London. It shows us where part of the Gambian community is and other West Africans. Um, ah, and so we do need to have these pots, even you know, in the diaspora as well, to burn the incense as part of as part of the culture. They're very, very common in Gambian homes. You're going to have more than one, yeah. you know, in in different rooms. Yeah. Um, they're a sign of femininity because they've got such a wonderful smell. Because you can have different incenses in them. One that's very common is frankincense. And sometimes it is, you know, the, the pot is taken around the house as well, but it's very common to have the different pots in the house. And also, because it's a, it's a perfume scent, that also is associated with women, so that when they go out, it's like it's part of their femininity for that as well. So it's a very important part of the culture. Mm. And, and here, it's, it's almost as if Khadija say is finding a way to talk again about being a woman in exactly. Gambian terms. Yes, absolutely. And it's, there's, you know, in terms of um, expressing that, I, you know, that's probably like one of the best ways of yeah. doing it in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Um, because you kind of grow up with that, that scent and mm. that, that smell all yes. around you. But also it's important in terms of the pots as well, because as you were saying, you know, traditionally, 
in red clay with, with white design. We still have the red clay pots, but they're designed differently, very, very simply. But like with this larger one, for example, they're, they're just made plainly so that people can then put their own designs on them um, in, whichever, in whichever way they want. They are quite delicate as well, again, reflecting um, femininity, the, the delicacy of them too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, in, in a way, that's a, in, in a way, it's an engagement with traditional, what you might call traditional femininity. Mm. In in that image, she, uh, uh, but there's this other image, Kurus, the Islamic prayer beads, mm. which you could say engages with uh, um, masculine and feminine roles in a completely different way. Exactly. I think that's really interesting the way that she did that because mm. it's obviously, it is Khadija in the image holding the beads. Yes. And the prayer beads are usually something that you will see men holding in public rather than women. And the prayer beads that she's holding are the long ones that where you're counting the 99 names of, of God so in there, of Allah. Clearly Islamic prayer beads. Yes. Yeah. But having a woman holding it mm. is then... It's that contrast showing the strength of women, you know, yes. she, and, and, and showing the strength of Khadija. She's not afraid to go in there and say, this is another side of women. This is another side of me. This is, this is part of my strength moving forward. And, and I can do this. I can own this. The next two of Khadija Say's images that we're going to look at have similarities too. One of them is called Limon, from Lemon, and the other one is Tulto, which means sprout or grow. So I'll just tell you a little bit about Limon, because obviously it's not a Gambian Wolof word. Limon, they do use lemons a lot in Gambia. It is seen very much as a Western fruit. But, and it is used quite a lot. It is used a lot for cleanliness. Again, femininity. So it is going back, linking to the Andi Chirai and the incense, and linking back to the toothbrush and the oral properties as well. So it, again, it is seen very much as associated with women. And in the image, um, Khadija Say holds the lemon to her mouth. So now I'm going to ask Marian to describe the next image. So, uh, Tur Tur is uh, an image in which Khadija has draped strands of plastic flowers around her neck. You can't actually see it all that well in the final image. It's got this amazing sort of blended, uh, blurry quality to it. But uh, in the um, production photos, you can see that actually she's used brightly colored strands of these plastic flowers. And these are um, flowers that are very common in the Gambia uh, in people's homes. And they're also found on shrines and worn by indigenous healing practitioners as well. So again, there's the connection to... to um, uh, traditional way rituals and ways of healing but I think that um, there's probably more to these images than that she also found enormous solace and um, uh, faith in popular culture and she in particular top of her list uh, I would say uh, that she talked about Beyonce and uh, RuPaul. Yeah. I mean, Limon for so many young black women and Beyonce. I mean, Beyonce is a role model for so many people, but for young black women and the whole album that she did on Lemonade is it's a strong one. There's a wonderful photograph of her in the studio as she was making these works uh, where she's sort of holding a peacock fan and also a book with a uh, beautiful photograph of RuPaul and she's standing there very proudly with this portrait effectively of herself with RuPaul.
This uh, artwork is called Pei Tao. Again, it's a very striking uh, photograph. And in it, Khadija Saye has a cowrie shell bracelet on her wrist. And uh, she holds a bunch of cowrie shells in her mouth. The shells are uh, actually strung together with a long piece of string and bunched up and put in her mouth. The, the other interesting thing about this pose is that she sits with her chin on her hand, um, which has a very specific meaning in the Gambia, and it's a meaning to do with discontent and unhappiness. So in a way, perhaps, this connects us with the, the trauma that's referenced in, in some of the other works in this series. Um, but perhaps the overarching theme of this and the title of the piece, obviously, is the cowrie shells and the many different things um, that they represent and, and the way in which they are um, so almost a quintessential symbol of Africa. The cowrie shell, this little shell just on its own, carries so much symbolism and meaning for Africa and Africans. One of the main things for centuries is the fact that it's been a currency. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a symbol of wealth. So yeah. it doesn't feel like there's anything negative about cowrie shells. It's a symbol of wealth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's one thing. And used nowadays for jewellery a lot as well. Used for jewellery a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, it's used as... Um, it's used for divination as well, isn't it? Mm, yeah. And also, it's really important as a link for the African diaspora to Britain, yeah. Um, yeah. To, to the continent. I think this is one of the most enduring signs and enduring symbols yeah. of connecting the diaspora. So in, in, in many respects, so not only does that kind of show Khadija Say's diasporic identity, mm -hmm. it's also like a pan-African symbol. Yeah, really, it's a Pan African symbol too, which yeah. is which is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, indeed. The image that really speaks to me, and I think, um, is in so many ways the most powerful, is the Petal image. It's the only image where Khadija is looking directly at you. It shows her with a confidence. Uh, peace and a defiance. It is a very, very powerful image. And it's an image that conveys her femininity, um, where she as a, is at one with her heritage and who she is. In some ways, it reminds me of one of her heroes, um, Beyonce, who she used to talk about. It is a powerful image of a black woman in her stride. It's how I choose to remember Khadija, and it is an indication of all that would have been possible uh, did she live on that night. Good evening from the British Library and welcome to our live stream chat. In a few moments, Khadija and I will be answering your questions, so please do send them in. Uh, but before we do that, we thought we'd perhaps take a, a few moments to reflect on the, the process of putting this exhibition together. Because certainly for me, it's been a long journey and, and a very moving one. 
and, um, and really a very sort of profound process of research and discovery. And it, it, it's one, I think, in which um, we've continually found out more and more about these images and found that there are uh, meanings behind meanings, as it were. It's been a, a process of continual learning. Yeah, I, it has been such a wonderful experience First of all, working with you, Marion, has been, has been great. But also Likewise. just in, in terms of <laughs> discovering different things about Khadija herself, learning more yeah. about the person she was, because we find so many different... Everybody says what a wonderfully warm person she exactly, was. Exactly, yes. Um, and just very joyous. So we have that in the midst of her artwork, yeah. which we explored in so many different ways. We spoke to experts in the UK at SOAS, we spoke to experts in the Gambia from the National Centre for Arts and Culture, Gambian experts here, um, you know, community. I mean, yeah. who else did we speak yeah, to? We and spoke to people who knew her, yeah. um, other artists. Friends and, and family. And family. Friends yeah. and family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we read some books as well. We, yeah, we did quite a lot of reading. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and even, I think, somebody's thesis as well came into <laughs> That's it. That's right. We came yeah, into exactly, that as well, yes. just to, so that we could get yeah. the whole context of, um, of Khadija's life, the different yeah. aspects, the multi-faith aspects, but yes. also the diasporic aspects and her love of... Uh, popular culture as well. Exactly, as David Beyonce was and talking Rapport. about. Yeah, yeah. So that all of that fed into yeah. it. Yeah, really, really yeah. Interestingly, and uh, there are uh, there are so many different aspects to the work. I think, and and then again, every time I look at the works, I find I often see something new. I mean, yes. I, I came in this morning to have a look at, at the exhibition which, which opened today, and and I just thought so much about these works what what really struck me is so much about these works is so much is interior yeah. she she is listening to something that only she can hear she's she, she's looking at something with her eyes shut that only she can see and um, it connects so strongly with religious faith but also um, African healing being quite private often or African ri religion and ri rituals being something for yourself mm -hmm. Yeah, because the images, when you first look at them, they do look simple because there's not much in them, it seems. There's the yes. body, the black body, yes. and there's an object, and there's the object on the body. <laughs> what was she doing with all of that? We can only make some interpretations of that. But also then when she goes and she starts mixing the popular culture with the tradition. I mean, I love those ones of Limon and RuPaul. Yes. And we talked about that and that whole link with floral drag. Who would have thought that floral <laughs> drag with those plastic flowers and with Gambian culture? But she fused them together. I mean... Yes, it, it, it is really amazing that there's so much behind that apparent simplicity. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we've got some questions that have come in, so mm -hmm. maybe I should go to the first one. Um, could you talk a bit more about the indigenous religious practices in Gambia and how that fuses in with Islam and Christianity. Um, I think this question is from Isis Amlak. Um, yes, could we talk a bit more about the indigenous religious practices in Gambia and how that fuses in with Islam and Christianity? Uh, I think, I think one thing that, that, that's emerged clearly is how much religious mixing, syncretism if you like, um, there is in the Gambia and how much people draw on different traditions, which is, is exemplified here. Um, and uh, another, um, the other major religion um, that you've talked about, Khadija, is Rastafarianism. Yeah, especially kind of like in the, um, like in the town areas and... Um, and they will mix that because they, some of them who, who take on Rastafarianism will see Rastafarian as a way of life. I've been told mm -hmm. Rastafarian is a way of life, Islam is for the hereafter. But it's also interesting, and it seems like it might be mainly the men who do it, but also the young women do it as well. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to the hairdressers, yeah. and when they take off their hijabs, they usually have locks underneath, <laughs> dreadlocks <laughs> underneath. I was quite right. surprised. But it's also quite typical across West Africa in the countries mm -hmm. that I know of, I come from Sierra Leone, for Muslims and Christians to marry, 
Yes. It's not really, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think, for, you know, anything mm -hmm. major for us. And you, you just celebrate everybody's holidays. It's, it's a lovely kind of space to be in that these mm -hmm. religions, they're not in kind of conflict. So she's able to bring this into her artwork the same way some, some other artists do, like there's another artist in the UK called Inua Ellums, he does the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's lovely what it can produce. Absolutely. Because it you can dip is, into yeah. all of those mm -hmm. different aspects, but also some similarities like Kurs mm -hmm. with the prayer beads, because both Christians and Muslims both use prayer beads. In this one, we are quite sure they are um, the Islamic prayer beads, mm -hmm. the 99 beads um, after the name of Allah, um, the different yes. names of Allah, so yeah. we're quite sure that they're uh, the Islamic ones. But because she's from both, it could have been either ones. And that was one of the things that we had to research, <laughs> which feet are they? Exactly, exactly, yes. <laughs> because we couldn't yeah. get that wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, well, the questions are now coming in, they come fast. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, okay, here's a question from Steve Russell. Thank you for this wonderful introduction to Say's work. Can't wait to see the exhibition. Which are Marian, uh, which are Marian and Khadija's favorite images and why? Nobody's asked me that, I must say. I, it, it's almost <laughs> like choosing your favourite child, which obviously <laughs> is, is not on. Um, I think... I, I, I was struck again by Tere, which is the one where she has the amulets on her eyes. There's an incredible look of peace about that image, which I find really moving, and yet it's also so... As we said in the film, it's so surpri surprising and, and unexpected, and I like that juxtaposition. So um, I don't have a favourite image, but that's one I'd refer to. I have a different favourite each mm. day, depending mm -hmm. on how I feel. <laughs> but I suppose, like, I think maybe David Lammy mentioned it. I like the um, image with her holding the cow is in her mouth because she's face on. It's like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm coming into my own and I'm not afraid of it. And she's, and that's one of the, I think it's the only one where she's, where she's face on. So that one strikes yeah. me, um, but I can't necessarily say it's a favorite. Yes. But yes. It, it is striking. But also just to say that that image, Peta with the cowrie shells, is also the first work in the um, Unfinished Business exhibition, the Women's Rights exhibition that, that we are showing at the same time. So the works in our exhibition here are silk screen prints, um, but the tin type of pay towel is, is also in the women's rights exhibition. Um, here's a question. I, I must admit, I apologize. I thought the, one bef um, the, one, the first one was ISIS. This one is ISIS question. Um, it's quite long, so I might just have to take the beginning and the end so we get it precise. Uh, hi, thanks. This exhibition is an extremely important celebration of the African woman. It gives agency to the African female presence and experience. Khadija Say's contribution to the art world in this country is particularly significant at this time, not only because of her untimely passing, but also because of the visceral impact of systemic racism that was exposed this year. Uh, I'm sorry, Isis, I have to skip the middle. I'm going to the end. Um, what have... Um, what I've said, what commitments have the British Library made to changing the narrative and opening spaces for the African presence and expression? Well, I think that um, this exhibition in itself is an important way of doing that, um, giving a space for African culture here. And um, uh, uh, one of the things that, that we were talking about again this afternoon is um, the way in which uh, Khadija Say presents African culture as a thing of beauty um, when there is so much negativity around ideas about African culture often. Um, and, and it is quite wonderful. And I think also um, this is something we have been working at. We had a major exhibition on West Africa 2015 to 2016, and that was also very much a, a concern to um, present African culture in, in a much more neutral and positive light than is, is often the case. 
Yeah, and I think mm. that we were also talking about how to engage the community yes. more. So we're actually mm -hmm. using what Khadija wanted to leave a legacy she has because on the basis of her work we can bring in the community you know a lot of people don't know that the gambian community around the country is quite sizable but not only gambian but those links to gambian senegalese as well and other west african countries so it's a way of bringing people into the library and into the work but you know and we can explore through that different ways yes um, and absolutely, this exhibition is free. Unfortunately, because of COVID regulations, you have to book in advance, but, but, but it's free and open to everybody, and we welcome everybody here. And um, also, I should say that, that, that we've already made a number of links um, with the community around the Grenfell area, and, and we had um, plans for various events which uh, were obviously disrupted by COVID. Um, but we are hoping to have some uh, real life events, if that's possible before May, um, possibly visits. And if not, we are looking at, at online events. Thank you. <laughs> um, Ruth Pearson is asking, are the pictures displayed, the original metal plates or copies? Ah, hello, Ruth. Um, the, the, the pictures displayed here are prints. They're silk screen prints. Um, and they were made from the metal plates, the tin types. Um, the tin types, um, some of them were lost in the Grenfell Tower fire, very sadly. Um, some of them have survived, but um, of all nine portraits, uh, there were digital scans of all nine portraits before some of them were lost. And those scans have been used to make these uh, silk screen prints. Um, we've got another comment. This is a comment from Felicity, um, I hope I pronounce her surname right, um, Buckham. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the excellent virtual private view. Amazing art. My favourite is the picture of the backs of women's heads. Such an um, appalling tragedy that Khadija is no longer with us. Um, the, those images are great, the crowns. They are. They yeah. are not part of this exhibition. Sorry, Felicity, they're not part of this exhibition. I'm not sure how they will be able to be viewed, um, but you, hopefully you will be able to come to this one in the space we breathe, uh, which, is, which is quite amazing. Yeah. Um, I think we do have another question here, but I think I can't, we kind of answered that when we were talking about the mixed religious heritage. Um, I think we, we spoke about that one. I, um, I was wondering, um, Marion, in terms of mm. in terms of when we were doing the research, what did you what did you come across in the research <laughs> that really surprised you or that really stayed with you? Um, yes, I well, I, I a lot of things really, I guess. Um, I, I was looking at, at, at our notes again um, today because obviously uh, we couldn't put everything in, in the exhibition. In, in, in the captions underneath each picture, there, are, that there is our distilled research, if you like. Um, but there were things that we had to, to leave out, um, obviously. And, and, and one of those was, was sort of conjecture, really, um, but, but uh, with some basis about shells and the sea and liminal areas between land and sea. So when uh, Khadija is holding the pot to her head in, in Andichurai, um, it's almost like she's holding a shell to her ear. And in the, obviously in, the, in Peitao, um, there are cowry shells uh, front and center of that, of that image. And, 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 and shells have this um, sort of connection with water, with water spirits. So again, back to sort of African religious and spiritual ideas. And I think um, there, may be, there may be meanings there that she was trying, trying to connect with those sorts of spiritual ideas. Um, but I'm not aware that she wrote about that. And so we won't know if that was in her mind or if that's an interpretation that, that we're putting on it. Mm, yeah. Well, what about you? What did you, uh, what, what was 
most striking for you? For me, strangely <laughs> enough, it was that whole link she did with, um, with the popular culture. Uh -huh. I wasn't expecting it. No. I wasn't expecting it. In some ways, I mean, um, Felicity mentioned the images, um, the, the crowns. In some ways, that is also part of um, very modern, well, mm -hmm. it's both traditional and both modern culture, because when you look at the hair, it's, um, they're all different styles and the hair's at different stages. Some of it is treated and some of it's untreated, some of it's dreads and some of it isn't. That I could kind of immediately get, but because I, maybe because I didn't know Khadija personally, I didn't know about her interest with, with Beyonce, for example. Yeah, RuPaul yeah. was totally out of the blue, but I can, <laughs> but in some ways you can kind of, so I love mm. the way she fused those things. Yes. And she's kind yeah. of saying that just because something might be hidden traditionally, it does have a link to modern to culture modern as life. well. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. That, I suppose yeah. that's what I liked. And mm. I think moving forward, she would probably have done more of that. And mm. it also showing that also tells us more about her in a way. Yes. And that would have been quite exciting. All of those links she would, yes. she would have made. Yes, it would You have. know, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we do have another question um, from Debbie Galt. I'd love to see Khadija Say's work exhibited and discussed in the Gambia. Are there any plans for this? Maybe within the Mboka Festival eventually. Um, I think I think it's one. It seems to be one exhibition at a, a time, and um, and it's basically mm. it's up to Khadija Say's estate. Yes. Um, yeah. Where you know whether they say yes or no mm. to something. I think it's really important that her work should be shown in the Gambia because she was a Gambian British artist and mm -hmm. you know um, both people in the UK and in the Gambia should be very very proud and I'm sure they are of Khadija and you know I was even thinking which Gambian women artists are there in the Gambia for example you know um, who, are, who are so strong but you know we know some artists there but the artists I can think of are all male for a woman to come, a young woman to come like this, is, is totally extraordinary. It is. It is and yeah. then to see, in some ways as well, to see themselves in artwork. When people see themselves in artwork, when people see themselves in literature, it gives them a confidence that nothing else can. Absolutely. And that's very, very important. In some ways, that kind of links back to ISIS's, ISIS Amlak's question, how do we make, ensure that those, um, that African culture and tradition is given proper respect wherever it is yeah. um, and not isolated. And I think yeah. it also links to Khadija's sort of avowed purpose to open doors yeah. for other people. She talks about yeah. that and she, she talks does. about that. And mm. when you imagine she's at the beginning of her career mm. and she's already talking and thinking yes. like that. She mm. is really giving a young, lot of young people hope, which is why it's so great that there's those moves to have the support for young people. Yes. Um, through the Khadija Say Arts Program right, yeah. at Inter University, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I think she would have yeah. loved that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's beyond question that she is opening doors now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's part of the gift and yes. the legacy that, that she's given, given for us, yeah. Um, so, I'm just looking uh, what other questions that we have there that we may not have answered yet. Um, Sorry, excuse me, I might not have, I might have missed those kind of questions. So in terms of um, how long is the exhibition on for? And have we, um, and in terms of any other, I know we had to cancel a lot of events because mm -hmm. of, of COVID and everything, but is there anything specifically that people need to look out for? The exhibition mm -hmm. is on till the 2nd of May. Mm -hmm. And uh, for other things, I, all I can say at the moment is watch this space. Yeah. And we are going to do some blogs as well. There will be we, blogs. There will yeah, be blogs, yeah, yes. So, so yeah, the yeah. blogs will be... Yeah. And, and I should also say that the British Library has bought a set of these prints. These, these are artists' proofs on loan from the estate of Khadija Say, but we have also bought a set, which will be available to researchers in our, our reading room in due course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great, yeah. I wanted to say a little bit more about the, uh, these, these objects as, as, as well in terms of the tr traditional ones that we, that we have, um, especially, I suppose, the pots, because, again, when somebody asked about the, the favourite image, 
all of a sudden I thought to myself, I love the pots, and the, the, what, especially when the incense is in, in them. When we, when we did the first, uh, what well, in the film, and we did have the incense in there, and it was a gorgeous smell, and then, you know, the, the, today we don't have the incense in there, and it, it almost seems like it has a different purpose. Just, just it does the, almost seem like it has a different purpose. Yeah. Um, and yeah, beautiful and then this is, there. Yeah. and yeah, but these ones were kind mm. of, these ones were got in East London, but again, mm. you will find now small uh, Gambian, shops where, where there's Gambian communities to be able to get so many of these different products. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in one of the images as well, and we were saying about, and Khadija has a bag with medicinal properties. So then a lot of those shops will also be selling some of those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because yeah. they are healing. They, yes. are, they are healing and medicinal yeah. for different kind of leaves mm -hmm. and different kind of, uh, mm -hmm. yep, for yeah, different kind of um, yeah. things as well. Um, we have a question here from Margareta. An illuminating discussion. I wonder if you could reflect on the choice of still photography as opposed to moving image, which dominates social and popular media. I'm thinking of the ghostliness which seems to inhabit them. I suppose it's about the process. Should I read that again? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I wonder if you could reflect on the choice of still photography as opposed to moving image, which dominates social and popular media. I'm thinking of the ghostliness which seems to inhabit these. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's a little hard to reflect on that in general terms, but in, in terms of what Khadija Say chose to do, I think this wet collodion process is, is, is just tremendous in the effects it gives and uh, the the sort of eloquent nature of it and and again we were talking earlier about the way in which it sort of connects to a past um, she's talking about tradition and she's using a very old form and old technique she's, she's visualizing it in an if you like, an antiquated way. And you can see the same thing in, in, in the film of, of Lemonade by Beyonce, mm. that, uh, that you've got sort of old situations visualized and converted into something that, that powerful, um, sort of a, um, run by powerful black women, basically, um, transforming that past. Yeah. And, and, and connecting with it, and, and I think that's what Khadija is, is doing in many ways. Would you, would you agree? I would. But mm. also, as you're speaking in, in, in other ways, it's still, it connects again back to um, the West African tradition in the sense of, mm. but also not just in West Africa pro probably, in terms of having photos taken um, yes. in studios. Yes. Yeah. Um, and those old photos, whether they be black and white or whether they be sepia, um, and I don't know if they use the collodion process in West Africa, but still that, that whole process of that whole taking photos, mm -hmm. it was a very important one for the family. And it was one that those were ones would happen each year. So um, that is part of the tradition in a, in a sense as well. That's part of the tradition um, uh, of, the, of the different communities to have those. So she has yeah. linked the European tradition with, with African tradition right there, just in terms of photographic process. <laughs> That's, that's absolutely true, and those photos mm. were, were, were usually studio photos yeah. that were staged in some way, which is absolutely. exactly what Khadija's done. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Again, she's used her own twist. She's used her own twist on those. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I yeah. think it's. Uh, yeah. I think that was going to time for our last question, actually. Unless you've got anything else. Uh, no. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, that, that, that's all from me. I think. Okay. Well, I'd just like to wrap up and say thank you to, to everybody as well and just mention in terms of Khadija's work, um, there is um, a quote I've come across from Afeni Shakur, who is Tupac Shakur, or he, she was Tupac Shakur's uh, mother. She, she passed a few years ago as well, and her quote was, um, Arts can save children, no matter what is going on in their homes. And I really feel that art mm. saved Khadija. 
because she talks so much in the interviews, in her interviews and her quotes, she talks a lot about the trauma and darkness she went through. She doesn't always detail it, but she does talk mm. about the racism she experienced um, yes, in Britain. Absolutely, yeah. And those, and you know, so coming out, mm. so, so to have this exhibition during this year with, with the Black Lives Matter movement and for her to talk mm. about that is really, really important. But what we do see through her artwork is that she was migrating, a different form of migration, migrating <laughs> through this trauma and darkness to come out on the other side and be really positive. Obviously, there was, you know, that kind of trauma you don't get through immediately, you know, very quickly. And she does talk in some plays, some places about spiritual remembrance, which is all very much linked to discussions we're having today more deeply around ancestral, uh, ancestral trauma and ancestral mm -hmm. remembrance, and she linked that to the spiritual remembrance. So she was moving through these phases and becoming stronger as an artist, uh, as, an, as a young African woman as well. So she really has left us this fantastic legacy to share with others, to share with young people you know, um, to say, if I can do it, you can do it too. So thank you, Khadija. Thank you for the legacy and the gift. Yes, I, I can only echo that. And, and thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed the evening. As I said, the exhibition um, continues until the 2nd of May. It's free. Please do come. Please don't forget to book in advance. Um, so thank you and good night from the British Library. <laughs>